one should entertain, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's phase three. Phase one is get it get it done. So today, after I've shot with Steer, um, I'm gonna actually figure out how to share a po podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome to Manufacturing Matters, the podcast series where we talk about matters around manufacturing. Uh, today, I'm talking to Zoe, who has worked at Fatford for three years now, helping companies around Germany, Switzerland, Austria save millions through reducing waste and increasing productivity. And welcome, Zoe. Thank you. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Today's question is going to be about OEE. Um, so OEE is something that we talk a lot about at Factbird. It's one of the um, metrics that we provide customers, uh, but it's not always the perfect solution uh, for manufacturers. Uh, and that's what I want to dig into, something a bit more opinion-based on OEE. So we're going to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of OEE. Yes. But first, I wanted to ask you, what is OE? Well, <laughs> that's a good start <laughs> before we talk what's good and bad about it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, so OE in, in itself, there's like a textbook definition for it, right? So OE is a number that takes into account the availability, the performance and the quality of a production asset or line. Mm. Um, so that's what it is. It gives you in the end like a percentage number. Um, that tells you a bit about yeah how the effectiveness of your asset right its overall equipment effectiveness is is what it stands for, and um, manufacturers use it to uh, get an idea about the effectiveness of their assets, but also specifically to compare assets with each other because mm -hmm. it's a relative number, so you need to have some some sort of com comparison for it. Mm. Yeah, so it's not like you should have 90% or you should have 80. So it's better to used as a tool like to compare between pieces of equipment. Yeah, I mean, like there's, of course, industry standards. Mm. So there is, uh, you know, like third party companies that do provide you with like, okay, you're in industry, I don't know, X, Y, Z. So your standard should be that you should have an average OEE of 80%. That's what we consider good. But of course, it should still depend on each company and also actually each specific asset on what you define as good or bad. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of factors that factor in what is good or bad. So there's not like this one fits all sort of solution. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that, that's a really good definition of what OE is. A good, good quick overview. Um, overall equipment effectiveness. Yes. Sometimes people say efficiency. efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. I but think that's the nitty gritty of what is effectiveness, what is efficiency. So. That's, that's, <laughs> that could be another session. Yeah. <laughs> um, so why do businesses actually use OE? Yeah. So in the end, like businesses are there to survive, right? You want to stay mm. competitive. You want to stay in the market. You want to make your, your profits. Um, and for manufacturing companies, a lot of that efficiency is actually made on the shop floor because that's their main business, right? Mm -hmm. So you do want to continuously improve um, the performance of your assets to get more money in the end. Yeah. Uh, and more money for them is mostly time because time is money in manufacturing, right? I love so, that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's what they use. <laughs> OE for to get an idea of the efficiency of their machines and then to have a starting point but from then on increase their OE mm -hmm. and because it has these three components it does tell you also where you can or where you have potential for improvements yeah and what are the three components of OE yeah so that's availability performance and quality yeah. um, that's like the textbook definition but then each company tends to have their own definition a little bit. So some companies tweak it a little bit depending on their setup uh, and their needs. Um, so that's quite common um, to not follow actually the textbook definition, but to sort of come up with your own, which is fine. Uh, you mm -hmm. just have to be aware of it that you tweaked it and you might ideally, at least internally, want to keep it all the same uh, so that you actually have an objective measure that is comparable. Yeah, that's those are some very good points. So uh, not not everybody uses the original sort of yes. Nakajima method yeah. that was set out in the 60s and then 80s in the English version. And, um, yeah, and then it's also about how you use it internally and as you're consistent, I guess, across all your plants or lines or 
or whatever. So you have a proper comparison point because as soon as you have variation, I guess, then... Yeah, then there's no no point in, in doing that. And that's actually a big challenge for a lot of companies yeah. that buy up other companies because mm. typically then they have their own and to sort of harmonize that is a big issue because then you buy, let's say you buy a site, I don't know, in Spain and they tell you, well, all of our assets have an average OE of 80% and you're like, great, that sounds amazing. Yeah. And then you find out that they actually calculate it differently from what your uh, existing sites do and then there's this discrepancy in information. Yeah, so those comparisons don't work so well. Yeah, uh, yeah there, there'll be different assumptions and different ways of categorizing yeah. downtimes. Exactly, yeah, okay. exactly. Very good. Um, so now we're going to get to the meat of, of this <laughs> the uh, meat. podcast. Okay. Uh, or the, the vegetarian meat yeah. or the, <laughs> the main substance is uh, what, what are the strengths and weaknesses of OE then? So it's not the right fit for everybody. It's, it's great in some ways, yeah. not so great in others. Yeah. So for sure, the strength is that it is an objective number that carries a lot of the information that you would typically want to hear when you talk about the effectiveness of your machine or your asset. Because if you just say like, I don't know, machine A produced 10,000 pieces and machine B produced 12,000 pieces, you would just assume machine B is better than machine A, but that's not the full picture you want mm-hmm. to know. Okay, what could it run? Uh, how many stops were there? Were they planned or unplanned? And mm-hmm. so on. Um, and so OEE manages to sort of compile all that information in just one number. Yeah. Um, and so at least on a micro level, it's it paints the full picture of, of what you want to know about your, your asset. Mm-hmm. And then also, if you don't just look at the final number, but actually the three components, it does give you a good idea on where to start to improve your asset. Yeah. So that's for sure a, a strength. The weakness, on the other hand, is it is a relative number, right? So what mm. is good? Um, so yeah. actually defining that is not as straightforward as one might think, right? Because you think 100% is always the best, right? You want 100%. Mm. First of all, 100% with OE, very unrealistic that you will ever achieve that. Yeah. But it's also that 100% might not be the best, uh, especially if it's not the bottleneck. Uh, you probably don't want 100% unless your bottleneck runs at 100%. Yeah. Uh, because else you're just uh, wasting time and resources mm. on that uh, other asset. So 100% might not always be the best. So that definition of what is good, what is bad, depends on a lot of factors, both internally and externally. Um, so that definition is not as straightforward. Um, yeah. I've heard of sometimes people uh, saying they've got 110% OE yeah. because of the setting. Yeah, 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 exactly. Then that also points to the fact that, well, the way you're calculating OE is most likely not right. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 100% just uh, is not possible, I mean. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like a, it's a number. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, you, you need to have a really clear understanding of how you set it up and how you're measuring it. And yeah. then it's looking at the, the difference in the trends, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think the other weakness is that even though you have those three parts and they point to, you know, where you can make improvements, yeah. if you see an improvement uh, in the overall OE number or in one of the parts, it's really hard to pinpoint exactly what department or even what action was actually um, the reason for that improvement. Mm-hmm. Uh, because... We're not in a lab environment where we can keep all other things steady and then just try out one thing and we can see does it work or does it not, right? We're in the real world uh, in a complex uh, organization where a lot of different departments do a lot of things at the same time Mm. that all in the end can have an influence on OE. So actually pinpointing to like, oh, okay, we did that. So thereby we saw an increase of 2% Mm. is almost impossible to make. And so replicating that to get more and more improvements is also very difficult. Yeah, so the attribution of it is tricky yes. if you want to get into that because no piece of equipment or no yeah. production line is an island. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> to steal a saying, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, but it, but it, it can still be very helpful yes, as long as you sort definitely. of understand those assumptions going in. Definitely, definitely. And then also another weakness is that it always very much made for discrete production, right? Mm. Where you have a piece flow happening. I mean, it comes from Toyota, right? They produced cars or pieces for cars. Yeah. That's where it came from, right? That's what it's made for. Yeah. So as soon as you move into other manufacturing industry where you have more upstream production, so batch production, for example, in a pharmaceutical industry, yeah. then OEE gets also very difficult you don't, because you don't have that constant flow of product coming out of a machine, but you just have a process that happens over several hours. And then OEE is not really that 
strong anymore as a number because for most of the part you miss the information to calculate OEE. So yeah. you, look, you need to look at other things than OEE to, to define that effective, eff effectiveness of that process. That's great. Yeah. 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 So it also it depends on what industry you're yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Like Factbird comes out of Royal Unibrew, which is a brewery, right? Yeah. So bottling yeah. drinks. Um, we also do have heritage in pharmaceuticals, so it's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, but then it's packaging lines, right? Again, where you have yeah. that one piece flow, so that's where it makes sense. Uh, yeah. It doesn't really make sense for the process industry necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Okay, we can we can <laughs> dig in. There's so many questions that yeah. I have, um, and I think you could answer all of them. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll probably take a few hours, but uh, we'll, we'll dig into some more topics in another podcast. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And thanks for joining us. See you in the next pod. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Very good. Okay. You're so smart.